What's up everyone, April Dunham here. I wanted to make a quick video for you all to summarize some of the announcements that were recently made about something called Dataflex. In this video, I'll give a little information about what Dataflex is, what the implications are in terms of Power Apps and Power Virtual Agents specifically, and when you can get your hands on it. But first, here's the intro. At Microsoft Inspire's virtual conference this year, we made a big announcement about something called Dataflex. Dataflex is actually two different things. It's a rebranding and it's a new offering. There's two different forms of Dataflex that were announced. First, let's look at Dataflex Pro. That is essentially what the common data service or CDS is today. So it's just a rebranding, a renaming of the common data service. It's going to have the same licensing and functionality, so the $10 per app per user per month or the $40 per user per month licensing for unlimited applications built on top of the common data service now known as Dataflex Pro. But the new offering that was announced was a lightweight version of the common data service meant specifically for Microsoft Teams and built on Microsoft Teams, and that's called just Dataflex. This new offering will be included in your Microsoft Teams licensing. So it could be your business premium, your E3 e licenses. Any license in Office 365 that includes Teams will now have this new Dataflex lightweight common data service database offering built within it. Now, I don't have a demo to show you because it's not released yet, but we can look at the screenshot and see what the interface for this lightweight common data service Dataflex offering will look like. It's going to be very user friendly. So natively within Teams, you'll be able to quickly stand up a table and create columns and add data into that as easy as you're seeing here in the screenshot. Now let's talk about the important thing. Why introduce this new offering? Well, it's going to solve a few specific problems. The first being that right now, if you want to build an application and host it within Teams, your only option that doesn't require additional licensing is to use a SharePoint list. And you might be wondering, well, what's wrong with using SharePoint list uh, for my apps that are based within Teams? Uh, the main issue that you'll hear a lot of people talk about when using SharePoint as a data source is it's not a relational database. So if you're wanting to really build an app that scales, it's best to be done in a relational database such as SQL Server or the common data service. So with this new Dataflex offering, you get a free relational database that you can use to build Teams-based Power Apps. That's the biggest benefit that you'll see. Also, if you wanted to leverage model-driven apps within Teams, you were, of course, looking at that additional licensing because model-driven apps were tightly coupled and related to the common data service, which required the additional licensing. So now you'll be able to utilize model-driven apps within Teams with Dataflex and not have to incur that additional licensing. This will also give you a better app deployment story, which I'll talk about here in a second. And then, of course, another big benefit is now you can build native feeling Microsoft Teams applications with the low code tools that you're familiar with, like Power Apps and Power Virtual Agents. So you might be wondering, well, why would I want to host my Power Apps and Teams in the first place? Well, for one, Teams has really become, especially during these times when so many people are working remotely, the hub for work. So when you're thinking about building out an application, why not bring that application to where your users already are and not make them have to go around between different applications and links and URLs. So having all of your applications in one place is great from a usability perspective. Another huge benefit that you'll get from hosting your Power Apps specifically within Teams is you'll get out of the box responsiveness. So if you've ever tried to build a responsive Power App, you know that right now that's not the most user-friendly experience to have to build. It's 
relatively time consuming, lots of formulas involved to get a truly responsive app built. Well, if you build the app within Teams, you're going to have responsiveness out of the box now. So the Power Apps that you build and host within Teams will work natively in the Teams desktop and the Teams mobile client and be responsive for you. And then the next is the simplified solution deployment. When you're hosting these Power Apps and bots within Teams and Dataflex, you get that ability that we have with the common data service to easily package up and deploy those assets. So your Power Apps, your connected flows, your connected bots. So you can easily package that up and deploy it with a single click amongst your different Teams teams. So how this is going to work is there's going to be an embedded Power Apps maker experience natively within Teams. So this is just an example of what that's going to look like. So you'll be able to create a new application and from start to scratch directly within Microsoft Teams. Okay, so we've kind of described one of the benefits and what this is going to help you with, but now let's talk about a few of what I'm calling the gotchas. Now this offering, this Dataflex offering is intended to help you build Teams applications that are based on the Power Platform. So because that is the intention of this, that means you can only use these Power Apps, for example, or bots within Microsoft Teams. It means you can't open these in the Power Apps Maker portal online or in the mobile app, and you can't embed these within your SharePoint sites. This is meant to be used and consumed only with a Microsoft Teams. And also another one that I will admit is a little bit disappointing for me is the fact that this is only giving you that lightweight CDS database. This isn't going to allow you to use, say, custom connectors in these applications that you're building for Teams and your Power Apps. So if you need to leverage a custom connector, call a different API web service with that, then you're going to still need to get that $10 a user per app per month or the $40 user license to handle that. I don't know, um, this is all new. I have no idea if that will ever change and if this, what's set in stone. I'm just giving you the information that I have at this point in time. All right, let's talk a little bit about how security is going to work with these Teams-based apps in Dataflex. What's going to happen is you'll get one Dataflex environment per team that you have in Microsoft Teams. So the users in that environment are going to map automatically to the members of your team. So security will be pretty simplified, so it can automatically take and use the built-in owner, member, and guest permission levels natively within Teams. All right, like I said, I wanted to keep it short and just give you a very high-level overview. We'll definitely know more once this is released and we start using it. Um, so which leads to the next question, when can I start using Dataflex? Well, they've announced that the public preview is coming in mid-August. So in just a few weeks, you should be able to get your hands on it, start playing around with it, and using this to build low-code Teams applications and bots. As this functionality is released, of course, I'm going to be making more videos showing you some how-to of how to get started with it. I hope you found this helpful. I hope it clarified some of the questions you might have had about Dataflex. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.